Hi, my name is Mark, and today we're going to continue our discussion of corporate actions. In our first video, we introduced the concept of a corporate action and walked through the most common action, dividends. In this video, we will talk about other types of corporate actions that you might run into. While they might seem simple, name and identifier changes can make it hard for investors to keep track of their investment. For example, if we want to keep track of our profits resulting from an investment in the video game company Electronic Arts, and it changes its ticker from ERTS to EA, which it did in 2011, we will need to ensure that the tool we are using to keep track of our historical investment recognizes both tickers as part of the same investment. The same goes for other identifiers and even company names, which can also change over time. Quantopian's platform handles this for you by maintaining one persistent security identifier called the SID code for each issuer that we support in our research and backtesting environment. Another common corporate action that can pose record-keeping challenges is a stock split. A stock split is an action that results in a company changing the number of its outstanding shares. A split does not change the total market capitalization or market cap of the company, but it does change the price per share. A common reason for executing a stock split is to reduce the price per share. Sometimes having a high share price can impact the liquidity of a company's stock because it becomes harder for small retail investors that want to buy a limited number of shares to trade them. Therefore, a company might split its shares in order to reduce the price. Let's go through an example. In 2014, Apple's stock price was in the mid-600s and the company decided to do a 7-for-1 split in order to reduce the price. In a 7-for-1 split, Apple shareholders will receive 7 shares for every share held before the split. As a result of this split, Apple's share price dropped from approximately $650 to just over $90. Keep in mind that Apple's total value, or market cap, didn't change as a result of the split because the total number of shares outstanding has increased at the same time that the price dropped. What did change, however, is that a share of Apple stock suddenly became more affordable for a smaller investor. If one were to take note of the price drop without knowing about the split, he or she might think that the price of the stock dropped due to some sort of disappointing news about Apple. Furthermore, an algorithm that ingests price history data might take such a price drop as a signal to take action. Wow, Apple is cheap, buy it! For this reason, the price history of a stock is adjusted after a split takes place. We'll talk more about this later in this video series. There is also a reverse stock split which is the opposite of what we just described. It is a split that results in an increased stock price. For example, a 1 for 3 stock split would have the result of bringing a stock with a price of $5 to a price of $15. A common reason to engage in such a split is to prevent a stock from being delisted, as some exchanges have a minimum price requirement. Now, let's move on to some more complicated corporate actions. A spin-off is an action that results in a company spinning off a business unit as a standalone public company. In a spin-off, shareholders continue to own an equity interest in the original company, but also receive shares of the new company. For example, in 2014, the retailer Sears spun off Land's End, which it had purchased in 2002. As a result of this spin-off, Sears shareholders received 0.3 shares of Land's End for every share of Sears that it held. After this event, the price of Sears decreased because it no longer includes ownership of Land's End. Sears is now a different company than it was when it included Land's End. For this reason, as we discussed above, we will want to adjust our price history for Sears so that we don't mistake this drop for something other than a corporate action. Again, we will cover this more in the last video of our series. Spin-offs are more complicated because they result in changes to the business other than the way that it is capitalized. This is also true of mergers and acquisitions, or M&A, the final category of mandatory actions that we will cover. 
Mergers and acquisitions are transactions that result in two companies joining forces to become a single company. There are many ways in which such transactions can be effectuated. In some cases, one company will acquire another by paying cash to shareholders of the acquired company. Sometimes the acquiring company will use stock or a combination of cash and stock. Alternatively, the transaction could be structured as a merger where shareholders of both companies exchange their pre-merger shares in order to receive shares of the combined entity. Ultimately, the structure of M&A transactions are influenced by factors such as the way the agreement is structured, tax, and other considerations. Quantitative investors typically try to avoid investing in securities that are involved in these types of transactions because the outcome is not influenced by the data upon which their strategies typically rely. The Quantopian Tradable Universe assists you in this regard by using a filter designed to screen out companies that are targets in M&A transactions. All of the actions that we've described thus far are mandatory actions which means that they apply to all outstanding shares of the company initiating the action. For this reason, mandatory actions become relevant to the research process when they occur during the period which is being researched. Contrary to mandatory actions, voluntary actions require an investor's response in order to be consummated. Such actions will only apply to those shares held by investors that consent to the action being sought. Voluntary actions include tender offers, which is an offer to buy shares at a predetermined price. Tender offers are sometimes used by buyers that wish to acquire a company, such as in a hostile takeover situation. In such instances, the company seeking to acquire the target company might use a tender offer to convince enough shareholders to participate in the offer so that it can acquire enough shares to complete the acquisition. Voluntary corporate actions also include stock buybacks, when a company buys back its own shares from shareholders in order to reduce the number of shares outstanding. We have one question left to answer. If some of the corporate actions that we described in our first two videos can dramatically alter the price of a stock, how can we be sure that our algorithms are able to discern these price moves from actual price changes that are driven by the data that we are using to conduct our research? We'll cover all of this and more in the last video of this series. To be notified when we make a new video, subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching.